All right, so we're gonna put the batteries in. Can't have a trunk without a sound system. We're doing the stereo, we're doing the speakers, we're doing the lights, anything electrical that has to do with illumination and entertainment, we're gonna do today. Okay, I know on camera it probably doesn't look all that impressive, but trust me, a lot of time and effort went to cleaning this thing up. And there it is from another angle. Oh man, not again. All right, so this is super exciting. We are almost done. We're just about finished the outside of the truck and we're gonna be going on inside. But before we do that, I'm just gonna run you through some of the things we've done. Last time you saw us, we were doing the fender flares and we were doing the wheels. And it's almost finished with the exception of a couple missing things. Still haven't got the hubcap uh, covers and I haven't got the lug nuts as well as the wipers that sent me were the wrong size. So got away on that, not a problem. On the outside, we, uh, we've done a couple things just to finish it off. Got rid of the racing stripes, the adhesive. It took forever, it was real nasty kind of buffed it and now it looks much better. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. We uh, painted the bumper, so the front bumper got a brand new paint job, it looks much better. I'm really pleased with how it looks now. We did quite a lot on the outside as well. We changed the, uh, the air filter, new air filter, because the other one was nasty, it was rusty and whatnot. And the last thing we did, we put some mud guards on the back behind the wheels. So outside's finished. The only thing that's left on the outside are the brakes, which is the biggest challenge I have. Still trying to figure out how to do that, but we'll figure it out. Anyways, let's go inside the garage. I'm gonna show you some exciting things that we're gonna to do today. So inside, we have this great big mess. And why am I excited? I'm excited because all this crap is going in the truck. Lots of stuff I've been ordering for two, three years now. We got all this stuff that's been just compiling and filling up my garage. And finally, today's the day we're gonna be starting. We're doing electrical today. We're doing the stereo, we're doing the speakers, we're doing the lights, anything electrical that has to do with illumination and entertainment we're gonna do today. And uh, we'll see, we'll do the best we can. Uh, let's, I'll just show you some of the stuff I got and we'll kind of go over it. First thing I wanna show you is some of these restored parts that we've done. I'm really proud of this. As you can see, this is one of the original pieces, center console. And you can see I put this boot on, it's just a cheap $8 thing from eBay I found. Put it on basically there. And that works nicely and that's gonna go underneath there so that's just gonna look much better then what used to be there there used to be this from an old Mazda MPV 1990 although we'll keep this forever because that truck was awesome next underneath it we got all the other pieces and all the plastics are just they're all ready to go you know everything's painted even did the vents so very excited about that now we're gonna move on to some electrical if you look down here, this is gonna be the heart of my USS Enterprise, AKA the Jeep. This is a nice little $50 switchboard. Pretty cool, look, it has a 12 volt for whatever you wanna put there. Even it's got two USBs. Shows your voltage, which is really cool. Usually my truck runs at 14, a little more than usual, but that's what it runs at. It's nice that it tells you that, you can really see it. And it illuminates at night, which is really cool. So we're gonna stick that inside, it's already got some of the fuses inside so anything ever breaks uh, or pops you just pop it off remove the fuses so we're going to wire that up and we're going to be wiring all the lights in the truck through this so i'm going to have all the control right there touch of a switch moving on now for multimedia can't have a truck without a sound system we're not going to be going too crazy in the sound system i just picked some stuff that was pretty cost effective and just had the most features possible for the least amount of money i'm not going crazy with this thing not going to be driving it a lot, so I don't really care about having a $700 sound system. But I did look up some reviews and whatnot, and this is what I found. First thing I found is these kicker speakers. These are pretty cool. Uh, they got great reviews on Amazon. They were off Amazon. I do believe I got these guys off... One of them I got off Amazon, I can't remember. The other one was off eBay. So when you're buying uh, speaker systems or whatever the hell you're buying, check Amazon and eBay because the price could be a huge difference. Or they could have more options. Some of them just came singles. This one comes in a pair, which is really nice. This one's in a pair as well. I'll show you what they look like. Ba -ba -da -ba. That's what they look like. They look pretty cool. I kind of want the style of the actual truck to look quite nice too. So. They had good performance reviews, so I'm happy with that. I know you guys are now looking at this thing and saying, what the hell did you buy? Why don't you buy something good? Well, I'll tell you why. I do have a Bose DVD entertainment system in my Audi. Uh, 2000, nah, it's not 2000, what am I talking about? It's a 94 S4. The S4 has a Bose DVD player, it like pops up and stuff. And it was like 150 bucks, and it's really cool for what it was. But if you look up the reviews on it, it has awful reviews. So for this one, I want to buy something better, so I bought this guy. This was about $300. I'm 
but it's still not 600 or 700 bucks. It's a DVD player, um, but has a ton of features. You can put your USB on, you can put SD cards in it, it's limitless. So it does have a pop-up screen. I do expect to have to cut the top of the dashboard. It looks like garbage anyway, so I really don't care. I don't mind doing it. But this would be a really cool feature. You can put a whole bunch of stuff on it. I love the idea of a DVD player in there. I'm not sure why, just it's just who I am. So I'll put that stuff in, wire everything up. Let's go inside. I did a lot of work on the inside cleaning it up. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I know on camera it probably doesn't look all that impressive, but trust me, a lot of time and effort went to cleaning this thing up. So if you look here, it's actually been painted. I painted all the, uh, the plastic and vinyl pieces, cleaned them all up, washed everything inside, so we're starting from a clean slate. I don't like putting on new stuff while it's still dirty, and it was nasty in here, trust me. Even I uh, did all the windows and door panels, I cleaned all that off because I'm not replacing them. And I literally filled three quarters of garbage can full of paper towels just from all that garbage. So we're going to put all that stuff and put the plastics back on, get this thing going and make it look good again. Now there's no way we can do any electrical without any power. It'd be nice to have the power so we could check things. There's a lot of the cables, we're not really sure what's going on. They were done so long ago that we have to source the power and connect everything. So remember this battery I used? Turns out it's a piece of garbage. It was actually from 2015, so when I bought it, for $250 two years ago, it was already two years old, and it was the last one there, so I feel like it might have been a return or something happened to it. So it's probably the source of all the problems I've been having, because even after we did the starter and I tried to start it up, I started on camera, but then two days later, once again, it didn't start. And I haven't turned it on since then, so it's just been dead. So I got a solution to that problem. Get rid of this piece of garbage. Grab these bad boys. Two brand new Cummings batteries. Well, the first thing I like about these batteries was the price. They were only $89 plus tax as opposed to $250 like the other battery. The Cummings batteries, as I mentioned earlier, they have some cool features like the handles, really comfortable. The other one just literally cuts your fingers apart. Really uncomfortable when you gotta take this thing in and out a million times. Um, also comes another cool feature. It has these two little balls here. You can't see, but they're green. Um, these turn red if, they're, if the battery's bad, so it's really nice. You can actually check the battery is good or not without having to use a meter or something like that. Really useful. Uh, third thing you want to check is when you're buying a battery is check the date. For the love of God, check the date. Don't be like me and buy an old crap battery and get, you know, swindled into buying some piece of crap that you can't do anything with afterwards. That is the reason for a lot of my problems. I have a four-year-old battery in my truck that just isn't perform well. So here we got two good ones. Sorry about all the flies. It's nasty outside. It's 40 degrees. Let's put these bad boys in. We're gonna make some brackets so they don't flop around and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we're gonna put the batteries in. The reason we're putting the batteries in, uh, we're gonna put the seat on top to see if it, it all fits because we want the seat to, to close afterwards because I wanna put some brackets in here so this doesn't move around. Because right now it's just loose. It's just dangerous, so. Put them in, put the seat in, make sure it all fits and then we'll strap it down. Okay, so the two batteries are in. We're gonna connect them together. The way we're gonna do that, Two cables like this, and we're gonna connect it with these wing nuts. I like to use wing nuts because you can always remove them easily. I do like to torque them down with a, a wrench or something just to make it really, really good connection. Although it's not necessary. And then negative from here. Whoa! Don't hit the wrong one because that will happen. Yeah, just connect. Same thing on the other side. driving behind me. <laughs> Let's put in the seat. Before we do that, I'll let you know that's my dad over there. He's actually the one who bought this truck. He's gonna be helping me with the electrical. He's doing the switches over there. I try to get this all going. He actually bought this truck, what was it, dad, 2005 or six? Something like that? When did you buy it? I have no idea. There's no idea. It was a long time ago. Anyways, he's the one that bought it. He actually did a lot of the work on it originally. 
now we're actually continuing it all these years later. It's kind of cool. So we're gonna put the old seat in. Hey, look at this nasty thing. Still haven't got it skinned because all the places were trying to give me ridiculous numbers to get this redone. So we're gonna put it in, make sure it fits with the new batteries. And then, just set the final place of the batteries and get them screwed in. So if you take a look at this, underneath here, they got these two cutouts. So my dad actually cut these out. I had a smart idea of putting the batteries right underneath. So the battery was originally right here. So now we're not losing that space anymore. We have the maximum amount of room. It's just very functional. And we're actually gonna have to assemble this whole thing because we have to make sure, actually no I don't, it's a lie. I can just put it in, there's like these grooves here. Well, it just snaps in. As long as that goes in, wherever the batteries sit is where they're gonna be. There we go. Perfect. So that's pretty good now. I know, let's just make sure it's good. Yeah, that's good. Nice and comfortable. I can sit on it. Okay, so within that mess of cables is a genius at work. So Mark has just connected all the old lights. He actually did the original cabling there. So he had to figure out what was done a decade and a half ago. So he did that. Now we're going to try to see if they work. Alright, let's see what you did. Oh, you got the uh, roof lights. Very nice. What else you got? Oh, there we go. Spotlights. And there's the daytime lights. These cars don't come with daytime running lights, so we added these guys because they come pre-wired. We just have to run it to a switch. There we go. Good job. Okay, so for the battery strapping, we're just going to use this metal I have here. I'm just going to knock her down. That's it, just like that. I'm just going to take this, put it, go to the battery, do another end of the battery, and then one more like that. And this is just going to go right into the ground. Two screws. Should be nice and secure. And that will just help the move battery from moving around. Plus, if anything ever happens, like I said, heaven forbid, we've got some safety. Alrighty. kind of how it's gonna go underneath the car. I just took a piece of metal so it's a longer profile. In case anything happens, you go through, washer, boom, metal goes like this. And we take a washer on top of the metal, screw, and then that's permanent. And you put those on, put your battery on, put your cradle on, and then cradle goes on with this. So that you don't have to remove um, anything with an impact. Much easier that way. Alright, so let's bring everyone up to speed. As you can see, the two batteries are now in. They're connected. One side I did lock nuts. Originally I was going to do wing nuts on both sides, but and if you just leave that and take the other side off, it's actually quite easy. So you don't need two wing nuts. So the other wing nut is just, it's just right there on the front. So you just take that off, and if you remove it, the piece of metal bends so easily that you can actually take the battery right out. So you only need one wind nut. So the whole point of this idea was, look, we have two batteries now in parallel for power. And you don't need any tools to take them out if you want to. That's nice and easy. Great design. And there it is from another angle. Two batteries. The seat will go around top. We're not going to put it on yet because it's nasty. We'll see what we can do with that seat. And uh, eventually one day we'll put it on, but not anytime soon. So we're doing the uh, sound system now. My dad's just figuring out where the cables go because everything's a huge mess in this car. So he's doing the sound system right now. We're just trying to figure out what the... Okay. That's it. That's plus or minus? Okay. Minus. Front, right, plus. Front, right, plus? Okay. You can see he's, we've already marked what goes where. He's going to start connecting those. And in the meantime, I'm going to connect all the speakers. Now I figure, before we actually put these on, why not do a little unboxing of these? 
We already saw those guys. Let's take a look at these. See if they are any different. Oh, I like that. I will show you. It's pretty nice. You know, I think it's really going to work nicely. Wow. I think it's going to look for the. It's going to look good for the uh, Mad Max build that we're doing here. All a lot of black, a little bit of red. This has no color in it, which is perfect. So uh, we'll go put them on. Hopefully they fit. All right, finally ready to put the speakers in. I had to change my clothes because it's so hot outside. It's literally 40 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is Fahrenheit. It's uh, over 100 degrees for sure. I think it's like 100 something. Pretty hot. Anyways, speakers. Comes with two pieces. It's the cover plate. Now, before you have to take the cover plate off, these holes actually fit perfectly here, which is really nice. So we'll just take them off, take out the screws, put them in. And then once you're done, you just put the cover plate on with the screws. It kind of gives it a nicer finish. All right, so the front is on. It doesn't look perfect, but it doesn't look horrible either, just those panels are cut apart. So this is the speaker, mounted to the aluminum brackets my dad created many years ago. So they just go on here, it's really nice. And on the back, I put some soundproofing, just get rid of some of the vibration. Any little bit of this stuff you can use is always good. And basically you just rewire, and then put the screws in. Four screws, and that's it. Alright, so the speakers are pretty much in, but unfortunately I got some bad news. See this thing? It's broken. It doesn't work. They sent us a dud, and that's what you risk when you buy from China. It really sucks because my dad did 16 solder joint con connections and uh, nothing. We even put the old one back on, and there was power, so this one is no good. All right, so I'm a little discouraged right now because I was really hoping to get the speakers in, the sound system in, and get to the seats, but it's just taking forever. We're on day two, and nothing's really done yet, so. Um, did as much as we can for now. I'm um, gonna actually just put the dashboard and the center console together and uh, Next time we'll be moving on the seats. We'll show you which seats we uh, end up getting them Oh man, not again So I had to stop the time lapse just to show you this again. It seems every single time I'm filming, the end of the world is coming. I feel the rain coming. I hear it rumbling again. It is over 100 degrees, pure humidity, so it's not surprising, but <laughs> it seems to happen every time. We're gonna keep going with the time lapse, and we'll see where this ends up. I really don't know, but the camera's going in the truck with me. Here comes the sun. I beat the rain. Why does it always turn into an apocalypse every time we come? Come on. Holy cow, look at that. That is coming down hard. It's blowing. Oh, I feel sorry for those people. My girlfriend is freaking out right now because we've been through a few tornadoes in the last year and a bit. Not even four years after. Look at the lake you got forming there. Unreal. Alright, so it's a new day. We thought we were done, but we are actually still going because turns out the radio does work. However, on these cheap Chinese radios, you have really poor labeling, so we had no idea what the hell was going on. Turns out there's a yellow and red wire, and you actually have to connect them. To make it work. 
So my dad's rewiring everything after he wired everything, they took it off, and now he's putting it back on again. So we'll actually be able to try out these speakers, um, see how the sound system works before we get on to the next stage, which is the seats. So pretty excited for that. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so he connected it. Let's see if uh, we got power. Hey. Oh. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. Cool. I don't know how this works. Well, let's try it. Let's see if you uh, let's see if you did it right, man. Let's try auxiliary. Mmm. Is there a source? Oh, it's loading. It's an Android one. Hey. Okay. Oh. Something's on. Radio. Radio's on, eh? How do we go to, um, let's try it out. It see it's all touch. That's pretty cool. Huh. Let's see if we can find the, uh, that's very loud. Well, it definitely works. Music. No music. Uh, huh. Wow, this thing's got like everything. Got Google and stuff. That's pretty cool. This is neat. All of a sudden, oh, there we go, auxiliary. awesome all right we're gonna put this thing together and then we're gonna move on to the seats it's awesome so happy right now sweet make sure to check out some of our other videos as well as our short film entitled Ottawa in which we integrated the Jeep restoration process into the movie